know about elements, you know about compounds. As it turns out, most things in our environment are made of a mixture of elements and compounds. Let's take a moment here and look at what we mean by a mixture from the point of view of chemistry. A mixture is the combination of two or more substances. By substance, we mean an element or a compound. And here's the thing. Within a mixture, each of those substances retains its property. When you take, when you take um, two components, mix them together, you're doing a physical change. You still have what you had. You've just mixed the two components together. Let's look at some examples. Let's see, how about this? Sodium chloride and water, two compounds. We mix them together, we end up with a liquid mixture known as salt water. And in salt water, you've got the properties of sodium chloride, you've got the properties of water because you still have sodium chloride, you still have water in that mixture. You could have nitrogen and oxygen. Those are two gases. Combine them, you come up with air, which we know is 80% nitrogen and about 20% oxygen. So you can have a mixture in the gaseous phase. You can also have a mixture in the solid phase. This is platinum and gold. Combine the platinum and gold, you end up with what we know as white gold. You'll find white gold used in jewelry. Now, gold is yellow, platinum is whitish. Combine the two together, you end up with a material that is a mixture of both the properties of platinum and gold. All right? So we can have mixtures that are liquid, gas, or solid. Hmm. We saw sodium chloride, which is a solid, dissolve in a liquid. Here's a question. Can you take a gas and make a mixture out of the gas and the liquid together? The answer is yes. Look at this. When you take oxygen and add it to the water, you get something like this. Here's all the water, and here's an oxygen molecule. This is a mixture. You still have water, you still have oxygen. Interestingly enough, note that there's not much oxygen. Indeed, oxygen has a property of not being able to dissolve very well in water. And so when you add it to water, not much oxygen goes into the water, but you can get some. And this gives rise to a mixture of water and oxygen. Hey. Do fish breathe water, or do they breathe the oxygen that's dissolved in the water? A very important perspective. Let's ask some fish about that. Come on. Look at the air bubbling through that water. Most of the air is escaping, but there is some of the air that actually dissolves in the water. That air includes oxygen. And so envision, if you will, the oxygen is interspersed within the water molecules. And it is this oxygen that's interspersed within the water molecules that the fish are breathing. We look at this water molecule here, and you see, hey, look, there's an oxygen atom. Do fish breathe that oxygen atom? No, they don't breathe that oxygen atom. This is a water molecule, and this water molecule is uniquely different from the elements from which it is made. It is not oxygen, it is not hydrogen, it is uniquely water. Fish breathe the oxygen that's dissolved in the water. They don't breathe the water itself. Got that? They got that. Okay, now let's talk about something very important here regarding mixtures. The formation of a mixture is different from the formation of a compound. When you form a compound, you're undergoing a chemical change. You're taking one material and another, and the atoms connect together in such a way that a new material is formed. That's an example of a chemical change. When you have the formation of a mixture, you still have your original materials. The atoms are not reconnecting in another way. So the formation of a mixture is an example of a physical change. Got that? It's a real important distinction. Let's look at the formation of some sugar water, here in some tea, uh, from the submicroscopic point of view, and we'll see what's happening. Each one of these ellipsoids represents a sugar molecule, and we're going to add the sugar to the tea. All right, let's see. When you do that, you end up with the sugar, and you end up with the water. Hey, that's what you started with. 
You started with sugar and water, you ended up with sugar and water. And the only difference is that now the sugar and water are all mixed together. Clearly an example of a physical process, right? So that's it. This, these are some of the important points we talk about mixtures.